to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today Around Kansas shares the early history of Eudora, Kansas, from the Kaw Indians up to the Civil War. Then we tour Sabetha, located on the eastern edge of Nemaha County, and we learn about their best-known and longest-running event, the upcoming Northeast Kansas Rodeo. Next, enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a look at the talented Kansas sculptor, the late Jim Brothers. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, good morning. It's Wednesday. I'm Frank. I'm Deb, and it's July. Can you believe it? <laughs> and it's around Kansas. It's around Kansas. My ears are still ringing from the 4th. <laughs> it's it's July all over Kansas, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We got the heat to prove it. It's the middle of the summertime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was it? I saw something on Facebook, and it was like this flame, and it's, well, it was Kansas in summer. So. <laughs> well, did you see? There's been a couple of great ones on Facebook. Um, the one going around, it was so hot we installed fans and you've got a picture of the windmills, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one was, I'm not saying it's hot in Kansas, but two hobbits just threw a ring in my backyard. <laughs> 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 it's been hot. That's a good one. <laughs> but we had a really cool spring. So oh, yeah. I mean, it was it got cold even you know up into May. It got cold at night. Yeah. You know, a couple well, of we times. talked about that. You know, along about the middle of June into July, we're going to be going. Yeah, what happened to all that cool weather? Yep. Ah, it's sh- gone. It's gone. Won't yeah. be back till <laughs> November, December sometime. Yeah. So anyway. But is it stopping people from getting out and doing things? Nope. Yeah. No way. Rodeo season's in full swing. You got rodeos everywhere. Um, the one uh, McCracken's coming up this weekend. Of course, we'll be talking about the Sabetha Rodeo, but they're just... Um, have well, you been to a rodeo lately, Frank? No, have not in a while. I... I can't believe it. I mean, we were at the Wallace Rodeo and, you know, little bitty town of Wallace, but they had a wonderful rodeo. And these talented people, oh my gosh, and the kids coming up, that's what gets me. Hmm. You got kids that are out there barrel racing and stuff and the way they, you know, control a horse and the confidence that these kids have, you know, in their riding and it's it's amazing it's it's something <laughs> well and then after the rodeos then the county fairs will start and yeah. then all of a sudden we're in the fall and yeah well logan county fair you know my new <sighs> home county year will be gone another year will be gone <laughs> but logan county fair is coming up soon um yeah it'll be uh this month and they've got um uh, just like um oberlin has their own rides you know they actually own the rides and stuff so they maintain them and well you know and, that, and that's it people you know out of kansas maybe have the idea that well what goes on in kansas and it's like a whole lot i mean every month there's something there are activities everywhere uh, because the small towns have all kinds of, of festivals and food and and uh, they're rather well it's eclectic because there are so many you know, we've got uh, Russians and Germans and Italians and Swedes and, you Well, know. you're right, the ethnic communities, and, and I was talking with a guy in Oakley the other day, uh, and he was talking about the black community that was north of Scott City. So you had all the exodusters coming yeah. in, you know, so you had those little communities, you know, with their own um, particular flavor from the south. That community had come from Kentucky right. and settled. So they bring their own social customs food like you said yeah. and well and native american powwows and yeah I mean, the powwow season is upon yeah. us so yes there's a lot going on in kansas keeps us busy so <laughs> anyway uh we'll be back buying a car shouldn't be this hard and at brown chevrolet buick in wamigo it isn't it's actually awesome whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. 
Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. LeCompton, the name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. LeCompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. Experience the life of the mountain man, American Indian, trappers and traders at the annual Bald Eagle Rendezvous, September 22nd, 23rd and 24th. Spend the day in historic LeCompton, shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. And we're back again. Hey, question. <laughs> when you were a kid, did you play a game called Red Light, Green Light? Oh, yeah, we did. You because know, you're supposed to run in some yeah. ways. Yeah, red light and you'd run yeah. and then you'd freeze into a statue. And the reason I did that is to be a segue into statues. We that have was, a lot of statues now in Topeka and in Kansas. And that was brilliant, Frank. Wasn't I, that cool? Yes, it was. Red light, was green light. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, so. somebody should put Frank in bronze. Yeah, that's <laughs> playing red light, green light. They could do a whole series, you know, if you... My friend Tom Ross does a, a paintings. That he did a, one of Willie Mays catching a ball. So he's got uh. four... So each one is in motion, you know, like this, and so, yeah. Say, hey, Willie caught the ball down here like a basket. That's yeah. That's what's so cool. He'd come running and catch it down here. Ah, yeah. so we got Say, another, hey, Willie. We got another subject for you. <laughs> so, yes, speaking of statuary, we got them going up all over Topeka. They're magnificent. We've already got the Ichabod crane up, and the others will be coming up. I just uh, was visiting with Scott Gale this morning, talking about, you know, sort of the timeline on getting the others up. So come see Topeka. It's going to be gorgeous. But all over Kansas, all these little towns, like one of the first one that comes to mind is McPherson, you know, with their magnificent equestrian statue of General McPherson that's on the courthouse lawn. It's just beautiful. But the little town that we're going to talk about right now, Eudora, has a really beautiful and unique statue. And did you know Eudora was actually a little girl's name? No, I did not until you told me about that, and it's really interesting. So It's, it's a wonderful story, and the statue just tells the story. And we're going to have a couple of segments today that feature uh, the artist Jim Brothers, who was a native Topekan, but then he moved to Lawrence, and uh, just a wonderful sculptor and a wonderful man. And um, this one and Eudora might be my favorite, actually. He's done some magnificent stuff, but this one in Eudora of that little girl and her dad are, is just, there's just something that, if that doesn't grab your heartstrings, you got no heart. It, it's magnificent, just magnificent. So let's take a look at how that little town got named for that little girl. The Kaw lived along the rivers in eastern Kansas, and what would become Douglas County was no exception. The Kaw were forcibly removed in order for the federal government to make room for the Shawnee Indian tribe. The Shawnees occupied this land until 1854 when, again, the government forcibly removed tribes to the Indian nations, or present-day Oklahoma. A Shawnee Indian chief named Pascal Fish owned most of the land in the area and sold it to a German immigrant group in 1857. The Germans named their new community Eudora after Chief Fish's daughter. The Oregon and Santa Fe trails passed by just a few miles south of Eudora. Countless travelers to the western United States passed through this region from the 1840s through the 1860s. Eudora witnessed significant conflict during Bleeding Kansas and the Civil War. Eudora strongly supported the Union, and many of its men enlisted in the Union Army. When William Quantrell led his Missouri guerrillas to destroy Lawrence in 1863, they stopped just south of Eudora. Quantrell enlisted the help of a young German boy to keep him on the main route of the California road since, in the dark, it was difficult to tell if you were on the main road or one of the many detours carved by travelers. 
Eudora residents attempted to warn Lawrence of Quantrell's proximity, but did not make it in time to warn the town. After the Civil War, relative stability finally arrived to the region. Eudora developed tremendously in the late 19th century and grew into a self-sustaining community, and today is a picturesque, thriving town of just over 6,000 residents. Eudora's namesake and her father had been immortalized in a bronze statue in the middle of town. The child hugging her father was done by renowned sculptor, the late Jim Brothers, whose studio was in Lawrence. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotating cuff. But when I learned about this, process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. And I'm not going to go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. It's rodeo time in Sabatha. Come to the 61st Annual Northeast Kansas Rodeo on July 16th and 17th. Steer wrestling, calf roping, bull riding and more. It's an exciting event for your whole family. The Sabatha Rodeo. Don't you dare miss it. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. So we're back, and Ron Wilson gave you a week off, Frank. That was nice of him. <laughs> yeah, and you know, because we call him our poet lariat, and people say, oh, you do know that's laureate, and said, no, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> He's our poet lariat. Because he does cowboy poems. He does cowboy poems, <laughs> and he does them really well. We're so thrilled to have him with us. And he's such a nice man. I was teasing him down at uh, um, uh, the Western Music Association meeting when I was a guest speaker. And uh, Ron was there, and we were talking about things. He was just sitting you know, with the group. And so I had the podium, and I'm like, why won't you be my Facebook friend, Ron? And of course, he doesn't know how to work half, you know, like most of my friends who live in the 19th century, you know, he doesn't know how to work Facebook. And so I think I embarrassed him pretty good. And he was, I told him how much he'd hurt my feelings and everything. So he's, he's my Facebook friend now. And send Ron a friend request. Let's see how long it takes him to respond. Yeah. Is there, and I'm going to completely, well, kind of change the subject, and that is, you know, there are a lot of songs about a lot of towns, and is there one about Sabatha that you're aware of? It's like I rode my horse to Sabatha and got the rodeo. That's a good start, though. There we go. That's Ron. a great one. Ron, there's your first <laughs> couple of lines. Now you just take that and go with it. So let's visit Ron in the little town of Sabatha. Howdy, folks. I'm Ron Wilson, Poet Lariat. If you haven't ever been to Sabetha, now is the time to jump in your car and head to the eastern edge of Nemaha County. This community of Sabetha has so much to offer residents and visitors. Citywide events bring plenty of opportunities for fun almost every month of the year. These include the annual Ride Across Kansas, Spring and Fall Garage Sales, the Twister Car Show in June, Fourth of July Fireworks, Albany Days and the Highway 36 Treasure Hunt in September, Halloween trick-or-treat on Main Street, Christmas window opening Friday evening after Thanksgiving, and Breakfast with Santa in December. But the best-known and longest-running local event is the Northeast Kansas Rodeo. Not many small communities in Kansas can boast that they have held an annual rodeo for the past 60 years, but Sabetha has the honor of being one that can. This year, on Saturday, July 16th and Sunday, July 17th, Sabetha will celebrate the 61st annual Northeast Kansas Rodeo. This two-night rodeo offers a wide range of events for cowboys and cowgirls, including steer wrestling, 
barrel racing, team roping, calf roping, saddle bronc riding, bareback riding, and breakaway roping, in all over 40 calf roping events, plus everyone's favorite, bull riding. And the rodeo clowns and pickup men and women really put on a great show that is entertaining and appropriate for the whole family. The rodeo kicks off on July 16th with the annual Chamber of Commerce Rodeo Parade. This fun event brings young and old alike to the historic Main Street to see horses, floats, and parade riders with candy and goodies for everyone. The kids start off this parade with their own bike parade, and the children who participate receive a free ticket to the rodeo from the Sabetha Kiwanis Club. On Saturday, July 16, the rodeo events start at 8 p.m., and on Sunday, July 17th, they start at 7 p.m. Admission at the gate is $8 for adults, $6 for kids 4 to 12, and children under 3 are free. Tickets to the rodeo will go on sale beginning July 1. For information about where to purchase tickets or how to participate in the rodeo parade, contact the Sabetha Chamber of Commerce at sabethachamber at gmail.com. Visitors are invited to attend the rodeo both days. Sabetha has plenty of food and lodging for your family and historic downtown to explore, one of the best nine-hole golf courses in the state, two major lakes for fishing, skiing, and other water sports, plus Somerset Park, a wonderful new ballpark that is also home to the Sabetha Lobos, a summer collegiate team. Many people and area businesses have come together over the years to make the annual Northeast Kansas Rodeo a hugely successful event. Those 61 years hold many memories and traditions for rodeo goers. Start making memories for your family this July 16th and 17th. Mark your calendar now. You won't want to miss it. Stop for the legend. Buffalo Bill Cody earned that title right here in Oakley. Celebrate its pioneering history and unique geography in two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Carnival, rodeo, tractor pull, demolition derby, grandstand shows, and more at the 55th Annual Logan County Fair, July 18 through 23. 83 and 40 and I-70 crisscross this hub of the Western Vista's historic byway. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. Hi, I'm Annette from Jackson's. Our annual gigantic sale will be this Saturday, where every plant in the greenhouse and in our nursery, from annual to perennial, shrub, tree, or water plant will be half price. Don't miss our biggest sale of the year. WIBW Jackson's Greenhouse Garden Club members can shop Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when they present their membership card. They'll receive the 50% sale prices. Jackson's Greenhouse has what you need today. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meets in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeets.com. One of the great summer traditions and fun things to do in the summertime in Kansas is rodeo. This is a salute to bullfighters and barrelmen. When you go down to the rodeo, there's folks you see as part of the show. They're a vital part of the rodeo's plan. I speak of the bullfighters and the barrelmen. They wear a painted smile and a floppy hat, suspenders and goofy pants at that. Their humor makes you smile. It's not deadpan. Those funny-looking bullfighters and the barrel man. But when it's time for the rough stock events, it's them down inside the arena fence. If a rider's hung up or a cowboy's in a jam, he'll get saved by the bullfighters and the barrel man. Those bullfighters put their lives on the line to buy a downed cowboy some precious time. They're praised by the cowboys and loved by the fans those professional bullfighters and the barrel men. Comedian and athlete rolled into one. They help the cowboys as part of the fun. If they can't dodge a bull, then no one can. I speak of the bullfighters and the barrel men. So let's salute this brave hero who displays his skills at the rodeo. Thanks for protecting cowboys since rodeo began. Those brave bullfighters and the barrel men. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. 
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And we're back again. Well, we seem to be talking about a lot of statues today, but hey, we've got a lot of them and a lot of new ones going up too. Well, I had the privilege of speaking um, um, in June at the dedication of the newest statue in Gage Park here in Topeka, and that's homage. So that is a war memorial, and it is the statue of a soldier. It is magnificent, uh, done by Jim Brothers. And when I arrived, I had actually been in Smith Center that morning for filming a Home on the Range documentary. And so I got up at the crack of dawn to be in Topeka in time to speak to this. And when I arrived, I was blown away because everything was already in place. It was overwhelming, Frank. I mean, it was all I could do to keep my composure. And you've got the pipe and drums from the police department. You've got the Marshall Band. And you've got all these veterans there. And the man who introduced me that day was John Musgrave. And if you go back in our archives, you'll find the interview I did with John at the Combat Air Museum when the Vietnam Wall was visiting, um, the traveling wall. And John is a hero in every sense of the word. And I was really humbled to be introduced by him and to share the podium with him and Chaplain Reyes Rodriguez, who was just uh, also a veteran and, and it was just wonderful. So you've got to go to Gage Park and see this newest statue. And you were talking about the eagle well, there. Well, the eagle that's there, it used to be over uh, by 6th Street. Well, 6th Street at one time was Highway 40. And Highway 40 was the Victory Highway, which was in honor of World War I veterans. And so it got moved over to what has now become a uh, Veterans Memorial in Gage Park at 10th and Gage. So that little corner of the park right there at 10th and Gage is where the homage uh, statue was dedicated. And so there are bricks, you know, honoring some of the veterans and, and it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful setting. It's really appropriate right there. You know, Guilford Gage, for whom the park is named, was a Civil War veteran himself. He um, served in the Battle of the Blue and was captured there. Um, the monument at um, Topeka Cemetery of the Soldier is one that he personally bought and paid for to honor his comrades in the Battle of the Blue. So Gage Park is a really fitting place for, for this memorial. So you, you got it when you come to Topeka, or if you already live here or live in the vicinity, this is something you've got to bring your kids to see. It's really beautiful. So let's talk a little bit about the artist that created this, Jim Brothers. Jim Brothers passed away in 2013, but if a man can achieve immortality through his work, surely Jim is immortal. Perhaps Jim is best known for two projects, creating a sculpture of Dwight Eisenhower that's on display at the Capitol in Washington, and as the chief sculptor for the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia. The small Virginia town lost more men per capita than any in the nation during World War II, and the sculpture contains 12 monumental bronzes. He did figures of Mark Twain and of John Brown as a Jayhawk. Some of his figures stepped from the pages of histories, others he imagined. Paul Durrell, who represented Jim's art, told a reporter, I saw that Jim had an ability to communicate raw emotion in bronze that I had never encountered in a regional artist. Kathy, his wife and manager, said he was a professional until the end and completed his last work only days before his death and commented on how hard he researched to know his subjects. Vietnam vet John Musgrave became his friend, called him brother. When Jim's work, Homage, a Bronze of a Soldier, was dedicated in Topeka's Gage Park, John spoke admiringly of his friend and of his friend's work. Jim's talent extended to music, and he was a founding member of the Alfred Packer Memorial Band. The unconventional group took their name from the legendary Western Cannibal. Jim's legacy is profound, beautiful, and communicates the soul of Kansas to the world. Yes, surely he is immortal. Well, we got to go again. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Under the rain. This is where it was.
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.